Critics called it gaming the system, but tonight the State Department of Education says there were no rules prohibiting the testing games played by some metro schools. Our chief investigative reporter Phil Williams uncovered the controversy and he has the results of the state. Well, the carefully worded report does suggest that some metro schools should be uh, put under a scrutiny for their testing practices, but the report stops well short of outright accusing them of wrongdoing. Okay, I'm seeing some really great work here. Metro's testing practices came under state review after two whistleblowers went public. True games would, would involve making sure that every student tested. With allegations that some low-performing schools were pulling struggling students from classes with critical end-of-course exams, often in the last few weeks of school, so those students would not pull down the school's test scores. All of these students, the ones that got pulled, have that in common. They did not perform well on the predictive tests. Why would they do that? I mean, the only reason is because they want their scores to go up. That's the only reason. Do you feel like the school system cheated you? Yes, I do. Tony Jones, a student at Pearl Cone High School, was pulled from Algebra 1, a course she was actually passing, and told to study it on a computer on her own. Sooner or later, after that, I just gave up. You know, I stopped caring about my math grade. So, I was like, oh, okay. I just didn't care anymore. In fact, the state report says it did find examples of such practices, but the state of Tennessee does not have any laws or rules in place that direct when a student can or cannot be removed from a class. As a result, the state does not take any position as to the appropriateness of such practices. Uh, we're taking a test right now. Tony Jones attorney Gary Blackburn says just because it's not against the rules doesn't mean it's right. There have always been people as long as there have been systems who try to game those systems. And that's what's happened here. So, no, I'm not surprised that we do not yet have any sort of a specific regulatory provision. Uh, I would be surprised if there weren't some interest in creating one now that the problem is identified. Still, the department does say that Metro should closely track end-of-course testing practices at five schools, Glencliff, Hunters Lane, John Overton, Maplewood, and Pearl Cone, as well as the district's alternative learning centers. Now, the two whistleblowers who sparked the investigation and gave lawmakers huge files of evidence say the Department of Education never even contacted them. And tonight, the state lawmaker who requested the state review has some pretty strong words. Representative Rick Womack calls it a, quote, whitewash by the Haslam administration, and he had a lot more to say. I'll post his full statement on my Facebook page at NC5 Phil Williams. Vicki? Thanks, Phil.